Let's um, I want to welcome everybody to this afternoon's session of the Budget and Finance Committee and a star-studded agenda here. We have first uh, Mr. Rich Riebling, our Chief Operating Officer. Um, here his microphone is turned on to present the Mayor's Office's budget. And I um, want to thank everybody for being here. And um, we, we will have meetings throughout the month. Um, and including, I wanted, in case uh, Rosie's notification came out to you, as following Thursday's meeting, we will have a brief work session um, to discuss uh, budget priorities for members of the Budget and Finance Committee and also anyone else on the council that is here. Um, so with that, everybody has their agenda, hopefully their books. Um, and off to recognize our wonderful Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Rich Rieblin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate you all being here and taking the time to come to budget hearings. As you know, it's an, having done uh, this in the finance office for eight years, it's, uh, it's a pretty important part of what we do in metropolitan government. So I appreciate, I know it takes up a lot of time in May and June, but I appreciate it. Um, I, I really have very few comments. I mean, we have essentially a status quo budget proposal in the mayor's office this year. Um, and I, I think it would be uh, fair to say that uh, we feel we can live within the budget that's been proposed uh, by the mayor <laughs> for, for the office. A little, trying a little, little budget humor there, okay, it didn't go over real well, but trying a little budget humor here. Um, and, and really, I, I think I would just like to, uh, to see what questions you may have and, and what I might answer if you have any questions about various functions and aspects of the mayor's office. We have uh, a number of, of, of representatives from the mayor's office here, uh, Justine Avila from the Music Council, uh, Michelle Lane for Office of Diversity. Uh, who else is here? Joseph, you know Joseph, of course, and I think that's all that are, that are here today. And Diane Treadway, of course, who uh, keeps it all in order for us. So uh, with that, I, Mr. Chairman, if it's fine with you, I would just see entertain any questions. Off to questions. Um, thank you, Mr. Riebling. And uh, Councilman Glover. Except Mr. Glover. I, yes. I, except, I, I thought we had an arrangement that the, the yeah. charter requires. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So, Mr. Riebling, you, I've already we've, we've spoken about this a, a bit. And and the, the thing I hear in my district, I, I, I would have, I would be amazed if we didn't hear it in other districts. After the mayor was elected, over a million dollars was spent on renovation of the office uh, before the mayor was elected. Uh, we had a project approved in my district to start widening Central Pike. It hadn't happened, but I believe the renovation project has happened. So what do I tell my folks in my district on why it hadn't happened and why did your why did that project happen before my project did if mine was actually approved before that one was? Well, as to why, let's let's talk about Central Pike, because that's obviously of importance to your district. And and we have talked before and um, a road construction project is not a simple project. There's right-of-way issues, acquisitions, things of that nature. My understanding is that Public Works is actively working on that project and is doing what it can do to get it done. Uh, different functions of government, the renovations in the mayor's office were done by general services. Uh, obviously, a lot easier in terms of approval process, in terms of not having to acquire property, things of that nature. Uh, I have given you my assurance that we are going to get Central Pike done, and I will give you my assurance here again today. Okay. Well, I just and, and I wanted to have the conversation publicly because I, I think it's important that our constituents understand that it does work in different ways. It does. And, and I get that piece of it, and uh, that's why I think we, you know, whether we uh, like one another on a given particular subject or we don't, never that never really matters. We we end up we shake hands and we always get along. But but I think it's important that the people of my district and various other districts, you know, understand that. We, the district council members, are out here plugging along, and so, and and it, as you well know, I'll keep plugging along to, to make sure this this continues. Right, hey, Councilman, as as the first thing you know, we talked about when the mayor took office uh, was now that the election is over with, uh, road potholes, sidewalk, street paving. They're not Republican. They're not Democrat. They're not independent. Right. They're not supporters of one candidate or supporters of the other candidate. It's what we need to do to move the city forward. And, and your project is one of those that we need to do to move the city project, and it will be done. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Council Lady Berkeley Allen. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a, a general question for the budget as a whole, but since I've got the expert, I'll, I'll ask my general question. The former expert. So my, my understanding is that the mayor proposed, I think, a 2% increase in all personnel salaries. Um, and so when I look at the, um, on page D044, I guess it is, where it gives the personnel services, and that's identical between fiscal 2017 and 2018, is that because those those people are not getting that, or does it show up somewhere else? It shows in general? up somewhere else in the budget. So, because the uh, budget, the, the pay plan hasn't been approved yet, finance has historically put the the amount that's needed for the pay plan in an administrative account, uh, and then we'll allocate that money to the departments uh, for, into their budget. So, it would be in next year's budget it would be reflective, but this year it's in the budget in an administrative account. I think it was twenty. How much money for pay raises total? Eighteen million dollars uh, for pay raises, Across and that's in one of those accounts, like yeah. three thousand something in the back or something like that. I'm not if sure I want to exactly go. where it is. Yes. Okay, great. And then another um, fairly simple question: There was a under the special purpose funds, there was a deduction of. Um, I've lost it now. Um, a deduction of 59,000 to adjust the financial empowerment grants funding right. is is that a reduction over last year that's or? a grant that that we got last year that's that will be expended into the next fiscal year but it's only a one-time grant so we won't, won't have that money again that new we won't get a new 59,000 we're simply going to um, get budget approval to spend some of that grant money into the next fiscal year but there's not new money coming in so that's why it shows as a reduction was that a, a federal grant where did that come uh, from it was a Foundation grant, I believe. Is it? Oh, that's Bloomberg. Okay. Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Uh, was it Bloomberg? Financial Empowerment. I guess it. Uh, I think it was Bloomberg. I'll double check that to be sure. If it's not, I'll get back to you. Okay. So that's just spreading it over two years. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's all my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Lady. Councilman Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Raebling. Um, just uh, two questions, and these are either for you or they may be for finance. Uh, the internal service charges. Uh, Mayor's office got twenty nine thousand five hundred. That's what it's listed. An increase. How did how More did compute? that get determined? Because uh, I'm seeing different things in some of the departments that have come through. Some are less. Some are more. Our increase reflective of more computers, more uh, uh, online accounts, because uh, some of it's for interns, uh, some of it's some other volunteers that we have in the office. So, how the actual determination made? I thought I think that Keith Durbin is probably the right person to ask that question to, because it's really his his. Um, his budget needs, which then are passed down by individual departments, that, that the total then uh, makes up his budget. So I guess, um, so I'm, I'm sure that Mr. Durbin will love me telling you, telling him that you told me to ask him this. But it also says fleet management, radio surplus property. Well, that would be, that would be general services for the amount of vehicles you'd use. I mean, fleet are obviously, would be vehicles, charge. And then uh, the uh, the other is uh, uh, postal or postal charge. Okay, so is there some formula? That's uh, that's what I was looking at. I, I think it's based on what the costs are to provide that service, and then it's broken out by your usage of that as a percentage of the whole. Okay. All right. Okay, and here's the last question. Um, and this also may be for finance, but in the back under the administrative section, um, I remember last year there was a lot of, there's a, a grant process where a lot of not-for-profits go through a system, they get screened, and then they may get money. That's not showing up back here because it says still to be determined. Yeah. Um, it's the community partnership funds? Community enhancement fund is what it was okay. called previously. So where, where is the money for that? It's not. It's showing up as zero for a lot of the things, but it must have gone someplace else. There's a million. There's a million dollars somewhere in this budget book for that purpose for next year. Okay, that's that's what I was looking yeah. for. It just last year, I think it showed up under the individuals, and you could see it, but now you can't. It was never there. Here, I think it sorry, Tanya. Yeah. Here. Last year, it was listed uh, individually into um, different buckets. Right, I understand where you that. had like a DV bucket and a um, community DV services literacy, budget. after school, and then sort of general services. That has been rolled into a single administrative account um, for fiscal year 18. And, and it and is called the Community Partnership Fund. Is it, back, is it back in the back someplace? Yes, it is. And I can t I'm going to look it up, and I'll give you the exact location. It's okay. Appendix All right. Yes, it's in Appendix 1, and it's in Section J, 
1 and it starts on page 7. And then I'm just going to scan this real quickly to, to find that individual line item for you, okay? And that's fine. If you can just let me know, because you can see, if you look at it, a whole lot of organizations are listed, and the, the amount of money they got is listed under fiscal year 2017. But under 2018, it's just all zeros. And, and that's true, because those are, when they get those individual grants, those have been bought back to the council as individual resolutions. Right. So those are always non-recurring items in the budget. So they come, and then they go, and then you go through an award process again, and we bring back a resolution resolution to the body to approve the specific nonprofits. Okay. So if you can just let me know where that, where it all ended up, what lump sum it ended up with, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councilman. Uh, Council Lady Hurt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have any really budget questions, but I'm assuming that behind some of these uh, positions, there's MO, so that's saying specifically in the mayor's office. On uh, D46, under the uh, mayor's office financial, it has like chief strategy officer, yes. hyphen ML, so that's mayor's office. Yes. And I, I think this is the one for Music City Executive Director of Music City Music Council. Ma'am. Okay. Yeah, that's Justine sitting back there. Mm -hmm. She's in the mayor's office, signed right. mayor's office. Right. Okay. The Music Council is partially paid, paid for by the city in Justine's salary, and then the uh, industry contributes cost as well. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, back to Councilman Glover. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Riebling, uh, you and I have been dealing with one another for many years now, and uh, I'll go back to the Purcell administration, if I may, where we were looking for sustainable uh, funding for schools, and I was always told there was no way to do that. Yet, in the mayor's presentation this year, we talked about doing a 2% uh, raise for employees this year and then a three and a three. Now, when we, when we take that number and we also add it with the debt service and everything else, we've eaten up $67 million plus million, I believe, if I understand the numbers somewhat correctly. Uh, is there a fear on behalf of the mayor that we are not going to be able to honor that? And, and what, have we, what, what corner have we boxed ourselves into sure, on question. that? Yeah. Well, first of all, on the debt service, the debt service, um, if the budget is approved as adopted, uh, as recommended by, uh, by the mayor and the finance director, includes funding for next year's increase in debt million. service, and then it becomes flat after that for several years. So there's no need for additional debt service money currently in, in the budget. Uh, the salaries would be probably somewhere in the 20 to $25 million a year. Is what On a they three point? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's 3% is about 20, 25, probably 25 million, to give or take a little bit. Including cost of living adjustments? Yeah. Okay. I think maybe 20, maybe I'm off a million or two, but okay. that, you know, that, uh, I, I think that the, uh, the, the, the thought process was uh, employees deserve to know some certainty. We have heard that from a number of employees, uh, especially uniform personnel, but, but all employees generally, that um, rather than um, kind of going in through the every year not knowing, it would be really nice if they could have some certainty uh, as to where they were going to stand uh, pay raise wise. And so uh, in listening to that, we felt um, based on where revenues uh, are today, where we see revenues going into the next couple of years, uh, we felt very comfortable uh, making that commitment. Now, everyone obviously has to understand that obviously that's, that's subject to availability of funding. And if for some reason there is um, uh, some economic uh, calamity that we don't envision uh, based on what we we see, uh, then we would have to come back to the council and uh, some, uh, eat a little humble eat a little humble pie and say we unfortunately can't do this. I don't think that's going to be the case, but that would take um, the administration and the council would have to rescind the pay plan that they're approving this year. It's civil, assuming civil service approves it as well. So, the, and I think that is to the core of the question I'm asking. So the the play plan. Or, pay plan that's being approved this year doesn't go ahead and include the future. Uh, Does not have the funding for the future. But right, it makes but, it, but it, future. it approves the concept. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. And so, no, and, and I don't disagree with you. I, I, mean, I, I think it's right that we, we look at uh, how do we take care of our folks before we spend money on 
uh, things that I think are frou frou. So I, I don't disagree. I, I just we've never done it before. Well, but we, I, I felt like it was a it was a had, question. It's been since the Purcell administration did the last one. That would have been sometime in the let's see Purcell was. Well, it was '03 with the MGT audit, but it, they yeah. didn't actually follow it through. Okay, I thought they did a multi-year pay plan uh, sometime during the Purcell years. I may be wrong on that. Well, I I I, I, th I think you're right on that. I just don't think it was followed all the way through from from the MGT audit, um, and and I could be wrong as well. But that that's the question. I, I you know I think it's a good idea that we're looking at this. I think we owe it to our folks to say, hey, look, if we're being prosperous in the city, we need to make sure we're taking care of the people. Who are taking care of us? So, I, and I, 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 I can't, you know, I, I think it's great we're doing that. I'm just wondering what backup plan do we have? And I appreciate you answering the question. I mean, I think we're, you know, if you look at where revenue has grown the last two years, you look at, uh, you know, where we think new growth on construction is going to be. Sales tax continues to be fairly solid. Uh, you know, we think we'll have, uh, you know, sufficient revenues to meet the operating need plus the uh, plus the commitment to the employees, which is which is you, as you, we agree is very yep. important. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, and the committee member, uh, Councilman Davis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I may be one of the last here, but I just wanted to thank you guys for all the work you do. We're able to interact with a lot of you guys in the different areas. Like, I've been working with Ashford on certain things, and obviously we work with Joseph a lot. And just wanted to throw out a nice positive thank you for everything. And uh, I know we've added a little staff over the last couple of years, and I think, you know, you can see it. You can see the work you guys do and just you're spread out over the community really well and uh, appreciate you guys thank you i think we we have uh, the staff we've added uh, from you know maybe from the prior administration with has been directly focused in areas that we think are community priorities housing uh, workforce development you know areas that that we've heard from council members and others as being something we need to do in this community and, and we think having those representatives in the mayor's office are critical to helping make that happen along with all your continued support Councilman, Council Lady Van Rees. Um, I, I appreciate the opportunity actually just to kind of uh, duplicate what uh, Council uh, Member Davis had just said, but it's particularly um, the strides that have been taken in the mayor's office regarding communications. Uh, um, uh, to, to quote somebody the other day uh, coming up to me and said, I don't know who's doing social media for the mayor's office, but they deserve a raise. And so Not me. I, can, I, 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 I told them we're, we're working on that. So um, shout out to communications Thank on the you. mayor's office. And, and uh, um, we certainly uh, want to make sure that uh, we keep uh, the talent that we have. And so anything that we can do um, to make sure that everyone knows that they're valued, we want to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lady. Um, as a uh, committee member and recognizing our chief diversity officer here with our chief operating officer, if you didn't mind, a quick report back on the um, benchmark study. I know we've talked in the past about having a report to Council, and I know there's been some delays in the benchmark study coming in, but when might we might expect that, and when can the Council have a, a, a hearing on the results of the benchmark study? So the benchmark study that the chairman is referring to is one that is required by uh, the procurement non-discrimination program. It really helps us to understand uh, every two years how the program is doing in terms of um, utilization against availability. Um, the benchmarking analysis for this current cycle is underway. Um, we hope within the next couple of weeks or so that we'll have that completed. It has been a lengthy process in so much as the data collection for this cycle uh, has become very manual for our subcontractor data, and we want to make sure that we include that information in the study and the benchmarking analysis. It's important because the procurement non-discrimination program is a subcontractor-based program, and without the full scope of the subcontractor activity within Metro, we would not have a clear picture of the effectiveness of the program. So I would rather uh, certainly err on the side of, a, of time to collect that data manually and make sure that we have a full picture of the use of those subcontractors rather than to hurry that process along and potentially uh, not get a clear picture of how effective the program has been. But I expect within the next couple of weeks the consultants will have that work completed. They've got all of the subcontractor data now and they're crunching those numbers into the full the full picture. And you're anticipating a report back from the consultants uh, that would include improved enforcement mechanisms. Well, the way that the benchmarking works is that that benchmarking analysis uh, would then be referred to the purchasing agent okay. as well as to the finance director, and then the results of the uh, benchmarking analysis consistent with the procurement code uh, should be posted um, 
for public comment, and that would be via the website. Um, so if, if that information were to be requested by council, we could certainly uh, provide that. What it does is includes details about, again, how we're doing with utilization against availability, but it will also make some recommendations. It is not a full-scale disparity study, and I think that we need to make that distinction. The disparity study would really go into more detail about uh, our utilization and availability, but also get some anecdotal information from contractors, and then make some recommendations about how we modify our program. Okay. Well, I know that's a very important program that the mayor's office is conducting, and so we look forward to hearing back from you and the consultants yes. at the soonest possible. Thank time. you so much for asking. And then uh, Councilman Bedne. Yeah, it's for the same person. For Michelle? Michelle, Michelle. You didn't mind. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? I'm well, thank you. Uh, so th I wanted to follow up on that, and uh, over the years I've asked to uh, see what can we do to uh, improve the diversity of management in uh, uh, metro agencies, mm -hmm. and uh, we we uh, tend to hear that the issue is, uh, for example, that there are not qualified people uh, <coughs> to take those jobs, and so in, in going with the fine comp, we realize that sometimes our things that are without realizing roadblocks we are setting out on on us being able to hire a diverse um, a, a group of managers that reflects the diversity of the city mm -hmm. so um, I guess what I'm asking is have and, and we had that committee that was set up under mm -hmm. Calden yes. that met and I I'm not sure if they have been meeting after uh, the administration of mm -hmm. called in was out. So the question is, mm -hmm. if you could, and you don't have to tell me now, but what steps are we taking uh, to really uh, improve uh, the diversity of uh, our city's agencies? Furthermore, uh, what mentoring or uh, training programs are we doing so we can get people to go up through the ranks mm -hmm. and become those managers that uh, would be truly representative of the diversity of the city. Thank you for that question, Councilman. Um, so the Diversity Advisory Committee uh, that was um, initially formed under Mayor Dean and has been reconvened uh, by Mayor Barry, reappointed by Mayor Barry, um, has met. And you may recall that from that initial uh, Diversity Advisory Committee, there was a recommendation there. There are a number of recommendations. But one of the recommendations uh, from that committee was that the city engage with a full-scale diversity and inclusion firm that could help the city develop a plan such that we could move the needle in this area. We have done that. We are actively in the throes, I will call it, of engaging that work. Uh, we are beginning what we call people process interviews, connecting with folks within the departments, getting information from them about their hiring processes uh, and mechanisms such that they can then advise and inform the Diversity Advisory Committee as they work through that strategic planning process. The goal is to, to develop a three-year strategic approach uh, to improving the diversity of metro workforce at all levels, including those up upper management levels. What we know right now is that we do have uh, diversity concentrated in some of the lower levels of government, and we want to see that spread across some of those upper levels of government. We want to see um, a special uh, emphasis on recruiting for diversity uh, as it relates to our law enforcement and non-law enforcement first responders, um, the LGBT community, the disabled community. So we're, we're looking at this uh, very broadly and trying to ensure that we are um, creating some sustainable change within government. Uh, as it relates to leadership development, um, the Economic Opportunities uh, Subcommittee of the mayor's newly appointed, or, or I guess it's been about a year now, uh, appointed gender equity uh, uh, council is actually working toward the development of some leadership development programs that we can then recommend for implementation in the Human Resources Department. And the purpose of that is really to help um, employees within Metro see a career path, if you will, and an opportunity to grow and to develop into some of those upper ranks within government and that we can have diverse pipelines of folks who can meet those um, management positions. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Um it's been very frustrating to me because when I'm being told that P Metro cannot hire people because they are not qualified, and I look around and I see surgeons, uh, accountants, teachers driving a taxi 
uh, it just blows my mind. I mean, we, we have amazing uh, quality of people that could be be culturally culturally aware and trained and capable of, of doing those jobs, and we are not uh, using that capacity right here in the city where we have an unemployment of 3.4%, yes. and we are desperately looking for professionals to help us uh, move the city forward, and we have them, and we are not utilizing that capacity. So I'm, I'm uh, thanking you for uh, taking that approach, and I mm -hmm. look forward to hear uh, what uh, movement uh, what the next seen. steps are absolutely yeah. thank you for that question thank you councilman and again uh, Ms. Lane, we you can see we're eager for your report back before this group thank you well seeing no one else in the queue i uh, just want to thank our chief operating officer and say you got off easy looking like santa claus clearly helps um and then to ask our bring the toys our next um our next presentation from our finance department <laughs> 